Welcome to Dom and Dragons, a Goats and Dragons campaign featuring Dominic Monahan. Please be warned, this podcast contains adult situations and language that may not be suitable for children. In fact, we try our best to be unsuitable for people of all ages. You're welcome. Welcome back to Burden, a muddy spot under the boot of the Gohomian army. If you have a sword, you best know when to draw it. If you have money, you've probably left. And if there's someone you trust in this forgotten place, you hold on to them. We're all just trying to make it here, and maybe we ain't looking too close about what you gotta do to be good in a place like Burden. Hey everyone, welcome back to Dom and Dragons, the stream where Helpful Go Gaming plays Dungeons and Dragons with Dominic Monahan and Lena and Galway and Adam and me. Uh, so the group reconciled a bit with Connie, uh, took a bunch of terrifying firepower up into the sky, um, and are currently now fighting what looks to be some sort of air elemental. Uh, that is now closed in ranks with Cryon, Elif, and the Griffin that they are on. And it is Elif's turn. <laughs> um, Cryon, did you uh, did you mention that you to to try to fly a certain way or or uh, to stay close to it or anything like that to Elif? Mm. Or are you just like run? I don't think I did. I think I'm kind of waiting. Sure, sure. Elif, what do you got? Um. Uh, so if I move out of range of it, even if it's the griffin moving and not me, it's going to get an attack of opportunity, right? Yeah. But if it manages to hit me and fucks up my concentration, this is a complete waste of a spell slot that was supposed to last me eight hours. <sighs> okay. Uh, first, I'm going to Eldritch Blast it. Um, I had a question with Eldritch Blast. Yeah. At level five, now I get two beams. Oh, yeah. Do those roll separately to hit, or do they roll for on the same um, attack die and then just damage separately? Separately, I believe. Separate attack rolls, separate damage dice, and they also independently proc anything that goes each time you have damage, i.e., hex. So you'll get twi hex twice if you hit twice. Nice, cool. So, awesome. But I still, I can't, I can't, like, like, if I had more than one enemy, could I, like, roll one on the air elemental, and then, is it basically, like, second attack? Like, if I'm a... Kinda, it just happens at the same time, yeah. It's just, they, they all happen at the same, uh, they all happen at the same time, but that's one of the great strengths of Warlocks, is you could be, like, beam one there, beam two there, and at higher levels, beam three there. Yeah, you just have to pick the targets okay. at the same time. You can't, like, okay. try one and then, yeah. Okay, well, both of them are going to be targeted on this thing, obviously. So cool. let's do okay. it. Uh, the 20 will... Oh, it is It is in melee range. And this is a ranged attack. So I think you have to do disadvantage. So should, like, those two just be for the first one, sure. then? Sure, that's fine, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a 10 misses. And then roll a couple more. Disadvantage. Ooh, a 13 just barely misses right. um, as well. Yeah, so so both of those bolts uh, of kind of flaming energy uh, arc out uh, and just disappear into the clouds. Um, the rest of you see this like orange line just dip into the fog and disappear. Do I think that I could position in such a way 
that Cryon is still in melee range and I am not. Like if I moved over to this side some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It moved everything. The Why is it moving? With us. Like that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like that. Right on, okay. Um, yeah, we could okay. do that. Do I take an uh, attack of opportunity then? It's, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna try to hit uh, the griffin. As, uh, as a as the point of order? Yes. Could uh, could she have the griffin take disengage? Oh, action? yeah, because it's not going to dash. Uh, if oh, you, that's yeah. all you're moving. Okay, yeah, can I do that? Yeah, yeah. fuck it. Sorry, just because yeah. the mount rules are this big, complicated okay. thing, I want to be like, yeah, yeah. hey. And I've never read the mount rules because I've never had a mount before, so maybe I should read those when it's not my turn. Yeah, the, the griffin starts to, like, flap and kind of back away from this thing like kind of having its claws up uh so that it doesn't it can't kind of move in and slam it um so cryon you are still technically within melee range of this thing you're just on the back of a griffin it's gonna you just have to kind of turn around in your seat basically to hit stuff um on your turn i don't think we installed seats on the griffin (laughs) yeah well yeah for now mckeck your turn uh, for flanking, this square would be considered the opposite of Cryon? Yeah. Yep. And I saw that the broom follows mount rules, so it's dashing. Yeah, nice. Uh, bonus action, Shillelagh. Solid. And then advantage on the Shillelagh. And Shillelagh. 20. 20 hits, yeah. 10 bludgeoning. I didn't appreciate the punching me in the air. Shlele is magical, right? Again? Correct. Yes. Good. Right on. Right on. All right. Uh, I think it's your movement. Um, yeah, my movement is I sort of turn around on the broom. Yep. Cryon, your turn. It is now still within uh, melee range. Okay, so I've not taken that up. What is it called? An opportunity? It's cool. Uh, an opportunity attack is when you move, like, in a, a cre- Yeah, our, our little house rules is slightly different than the the raw rules, um, but it's it's when you move within engagement range of something. Right. Um, he he did attack, but he attacked the Griffin, not you. Okay, so I don't. Um, so if he moves outside of your engagement, you'll get an attack of opportunity. But he's staying there right now. Okay. But for now, I don't need to burn that. Um, yeah. So, what do I have? I have? I have my darts, right? I could throw. You could? Yeah. You can still. I mean, you're close enough to technically punch and kick this thing, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Just don't fall off the griffin. Is it? Would it be a, a, extremely foolhardy to, to jump on this thing? Yeah. To jump on it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not foolhardy. Don't get me wrong. Do whatever you want. I don't know. If it, is it solid? Like, I guess it it's hits not, are, yeah, it, air. It's not super solid. No, it's yeah. more like gastious. You um, don't know if there's anything to hold on to, and it's a very long drop. All right. Yeah. Well, he does have kind of adept feet, right? Cryon. So sure. uh, what would that be? Is that just a basic attack? Martial attack. Uh, it's part of his martial uh, attacks, which at level five... Monks have gone up from a D4 to a D6 in that attack, so you're hitting harder every time you hit. All right, well, let's do a martial attack. See? All right. Oh. Uh, First one, yeah, 23. 23 absolutely hits. Nice. Um, Now, uh, you also have Stunning Strike, which is every time you hit, you could spend a key point to force it to try to resist you like you're trying to hit it in a very specific spot to stun it yeah um you could do that if you want that that would take a key point yeah that's the bottom thing right and and, and if i stun it then that means that everyone in the gang gets a chance to attack it and it can't do anything yet yeah yep okay i'll do that so what do i do i spend a key point yeah you just spend a key point and tell me that's what you're doing i'll have it roll a constitution check and it has to be what stronger than a 13 right stronger than a 13 or 13 or better Oh no. 21. So yeah, you you uh, kick into it, um, dispersing a bit of the cloud and air into it. You're hurting it pretty decently, but um, yeah, just not able to stun it this time. Damn. Uh, so you have two more attacks now. 
Uh, and if you want a fourth, um, that you could spend a key point to do flurry of blows. Let's just do these two attacks, I think, right? All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Two more martial attacks. Then. Jesus. All right. uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice. 25 and a 25. Definitely hit. Uh, and again, you could you could spend more key points to try to do more stunning strikes every time you hit. It's just up to you how many you want to do. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, let's do one more. Let's see. All right, we'll do one more of those. Spend a key point. So now I'm down to three. Let's, uh, yeah, let's see what it rolls. One lower than a 13. Oh, a 13. A 13. Yeah, it did. It saved it exactly. Ugh. Wow. Yeah, just, uh, you're able, you see it kind of almost flicker in its form. Um, but you've heard it enough where it's it's having trouble even staying together as a massive cloud in front of you. Uh, it's very, very hurt now. Um, because basically, I imagine, yeah, you you just sort of leap off of the, the, the back of the griffin, holding on with your hands and just kicking it just a few times uh, in its face. Yeah, right in its face. All right. All right. I think I think that's it, right? Yeah, you've heard it quite a lot, uh, and it looks just insanely uh, angry. It turns into a, like a black cloud almost in its face, and just kind of hisses at you. Uh, very good, very good, Connie. Your turn. Um, how are we handling speed and movement again with the Griffin and? Uh, the Griffin has a forty speed, um, and it it no, it goes forty, and then if you want it to dash, it can. Um, then it'll go 40 more. So it can go up to 80 as fast as it can go. Cool. Yeah, then I'll have it basically following after Mikek. Um, okay. Like to... Yep, right there. Okay. And I will go ahead and recklessly attack yet again with Betty. That's a crit hit. Uh, oh, that's a crit that's hit. Bad. Oh my gosh. Let's see what happens. Interesting. Yeah. Is it a surprise? Do I surprise it? Not, uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to say yes. It's surrounded by all these other things, all these other things attacking it, and you come out of nowhere silently. Then with my surprise attack feature, I... Uh, deal an extra 2d6 of damage. Alright, I like it, I like it. 2d6 bludgeoning. Yeah, immediately, um, quickly and quietly, you immediately disperse this creature. Uh, it seems to have just vanished now out of thin air. Air dead! Air dead! Yeehaw! Giddy up! Howdy, partner! Other phrases. You know there's a limit to what my magic does, right? Oh, yeah, your past no trace. Yeah, yeah, yo, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Stupid Terry, we should, look at, we should look at the fuck out of the air now, because that was like really freaking you guys. I really, 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 really didn't like it. Yeah, what she said, but slower. Uh, you're not out of turn order yet, just so you know. Um, Ugh. Andy. <laughs> you uh all of you hear uh from somewhere above you it's the dragon and you see in the clouds above you a massive winged creature you just see the shadow go through the clouds somewhere above you elif what would you like to do <laughs> We're level five. I'm not finding a fucking dragon. <laughs> um, I'm heading towards the cave. All right. Beautiful. You'll be here. Uh, here, but on the other side of the map. Oh, okay. I was like, but the cave is the other way, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Mikek? Uh, I'm just booking it. At, or Doing rather, I'm using this, and we're aware of Belinda's special ability. Yes. Yep, anyone who's taken the time with Belinda. Um, 
Although it doesn't really take my action for me to be like to control it or anything, so I probably don't need that right now. Um, and then, because that's all uh, on... there in the back of your head, there is a slight thing that says, uh, if, if this thing is not in control of itself and it doesn't have a controller, it will just sort of fall to the ground. If it is in control of itself, it can then make decisions about where it goes. <laughs> does, that, does that make any sense? Yeah, I'll sort of be like, belly of hey, Belinda, um, maybe just sort of generally keep us with the rest of the group. And I'm actually, can I communicate with it then? Uh, like, on a limited sense? Yeah, you think it can understand you, and it definitely sort of nods a bit. <laughs> but, like, it follows orders. Yeah, yeah. Um, as much as it wants to, yeah. Which you've you've not really met Belinda yet, so you're not exactly sure how this goes. But if I get knocked off of you, could you please dive and save me? I would appreciate it very much, and we'll donate money towards I, I don't know new twine, new straw. What do magic brooms like? Just nods. Yes. Good. <laughs> how does it not describe that? Paint me a visual picture of a broom nodding. Uh, it just, it, it literally just, yeah, it, it just goes, imagine Cryon is sitting on this. But I'm, but I'm McKeck. Imagine McKeck sitting on this, and then it goes, boop, 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 boop. That was it. Nice. <laughs> I, I also feel like the, the, the run in with the air elemental immediately is like, uh, okay. Uh, hmm. Also here, pull out like a copper piece, hand to Kitty. Nice. You're a good dragon. It's like in your backpack at this point. It just its little head goes Arr! and then disappears back in there. Good job, Kitty. Uh, Cryon, this is that dark shape you saw above you. That was a very similar shape to the one that your Griffins saw the other night. And if you recall, the Griffins freaked out. Mm. Uh, the Griffin freaked out, and you can feel the one under, underneath you having kind of a hard time maintaining their their composure mm. um, but you can only sense that because you know what's sort of about to happen with it if you want you could try to make a animal handling check to try to calm it down yeah sure yeah with a, a six that first one yeah uh, you just can you can sense what's about to happen but you just are not in a, a position to be able to calm it down enough uh, so if you want to, you can tell Elif this thing might just dive all of a sudden um, if we can't calm it down. Yeah, I think I think that's what Cryon does. Just says, hold, hold on, something. Hold, Elif, this this could get a little crazy. All right, Connie, your turn. Which Griffin is Connie on? Uh, you're not sure. <laughs> Do I know which Griffin Connie's on? Because I would have been. Uh, yeah, you were keeping track of it. Uh, Connie, Connie is on. Um, uh, Connie's on the one that you suggested he ride, um, which is uh, the one who thinks its name is everyone else's name too. Cool, cool, good. good. Um, yeah, I'll be following suit with everybody else. Connie's gonna be like, "Hey, Betty, what do you say we chase after Belinda? You two can hook up after this. What do you think?" Is this another nickname for me? No, Betty and Belinda. We got two phallus shaped things with woman names who might be interested in each other. Uh, you start to see uh, dark shapes in the in the distant uh, cloud fog cover of this place. Um, they seem to be large floating rocks, giant floating rocks, boulders. Do you mean like like? islands or like um, almost uh, like they're only like 20 30 feet across um but they're but they're floating in midair is the most distinct part of this um you think you're getting very close to the mountain itself as if this is just a little bit of debris also kind of caught up in whatever's holding the mountain up well that's perfectly normal hmm. do i get the sense that my Griffin might freak out. I guess I don't have. I mean, don't get that sense. Nope. You're this. You're not very familiar with this Griffin. Although the one roll I rolled with it, it's pretty good. Yeah, you did, you did pretty good. You did pretty That's good for flying it. 
if I mean, it wouldn't be out of bounds to say that you are worried about that because that thing terrified you just from the shape of it. Do you want to try to see if your griffin is going to freak out? I mean, part it would would Cryon have kind of reported that aspect of the story. Like, didn't he say like when this thing showed up, like my griffin kind of freaked out? Probably, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can give me a you can give me an animal handling check to see if you can sense that. Six. You you think it's fine? Probably. Cool. Probably, probably, probably all good. Are we above the cave entrance that we saw? Uh, not quite. You're heading directly there. It's it's still maybe a hundred feet in front of you, but okay. Um, but, but it's now, like we're not above it. It's kind of it's that direction. It's, it's right? a, yeah. It's a, about the level you're at because you're still okay. pretty heavily in the cloud cover. Okay. Um, does everyone give me another stealth uh, check, please? Still adding the plus 10. Yes. Unless, yeah, it's just not even concentration, right? It's just a thing. Fucking thank God for that. 19. 26. Uh, 18 for Dom. Mm-hmm. 22 for, for... <laughs> Really bad rolls all around. Just thank God for that spot trace. Yeah, this is, this is the averaging of the previous one. Um... No one look at what is rolling this. <laughs> Andy, do you just like want us to close our eyes? <laughs> no, just forget that you saw it. Okay. 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 I, I didn't look. You could also just roll the D20 and apply to mod. I could have. <laughs> it, yeah. Um, yes. So that's a. You're the DM, can't you roll this blind so we wouldn't have seen that and known that it, like, like, I know what that number means. I have everything set uh, for just rolling it straight like this. I didn't want to have to mess with it. All right. You're a little worried that that giant shape above you has now turned and sort of caught up to your uh, 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 path to the mountain. Um, and now that it's dipped underneath the cloud cover as well and kind of gotten somewhat close to you here, you see it as some dark, probably a black dragon. Our actual dragon in Dom and Dragons. Ah! Hooray! Um, it doesn't look incredibly giant, like some that you've heard of legend. But any sort of dragon is very, very bad news. Um, I don't think I don't think I need to tell you, uh, but just in case, Cryon and Dom also this is the first time you're encountering a dragon. You're not really at a level to encounter a dragon yet. A <laughs> <laughs> little bit of metagame aspect. This thing, this this foe is beyond all of you. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Um, we don't know its level. You never know the level of it's it's. Yeah, it's worth keeping in mind that a dragon, what before ten level ten is always a bit of a monster to deal with. Uh, right. Yeah, it depends a little bit on. Yeah, like I didn't feel comfortable giving a pretty decent sized dragon below level twelve to my characters in an, our other game. Okay. Um, but yeah, but you know, it's a smaller dragon. Maybe it's fine. <laughs> anyway, Elif, your turn. It's not fine. It's not fine. Um, okay. Um, yeah, fuck me, right? So I think as a bonus action, I can just move Hex to it. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Not because I want to engage with it, but just because it's comforting for me to have Hex on there. All right. And do I get to choose a new save when I move it? Or is it the same for all forever now? I would imagine a new save. Does it say, like, when you cast the spell you have to pick? Or when you pick a target it says when you cast the spell choose one ability. Mm, so probably yeah it probably has to be the same save okay, so it's still dex okay and then i want to move the full 80 feet but all the way down here um gotcha. <laughs> on the griffin absolutely it's it's still on the way to the cave but um Zig-zagging. certainly yeah Mechanic. Uh, 
Wait, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to decide if I should engage, or just maybe it'll just leave me alone if I don't shoot it. Um. You could always ready an action as well. Yeah, can I ready an Eldritch Blast for if it's not leaving me alone or other people alone? If it's generally not leaving us alone, I guess Eldritch Blast. Okay. All right. Mikek. Oh, son of a bitch. Um, it, it just sort of as as I'm going by Connie, he's just gonna hear. So based on their track record, that's like what a corporal. I love it. Uh, and I'm going to, I'll, I'll ready a magic stone if it looks like it's aggressively closing with us. All right, uh, Cran. There's a dragon off to your left. Uh, giant stones in front of you. If uh, everyone else is sort of readied in action, if it gets uh, too close or if it looks like it's going to attack. So I'm setting ourselves in case it does something. Right. So that what, would be a ready in action. As a, as, a, as a noob, how does that how does that look for me? Like, what do I what do? I, do? I, I put a dart in my crossbow and... Right, yeah. You load up your crossbow bolt um, and, and you just sort of keep aim-ish at it. And if it looks like it's going to turn on you, I can, I can say like, yeah. Does this trigger what you were thinking was going to happen? And then if it does, you fire. Uh, and you know, if not, you just don't have an action that you're using, which is fine. Okay. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a, a intelligent thing to do. Put a put a dart in my a bolt in my crossbow and just yeah. Uh... Uh, the the only other preparatory thing that you could do is called the dodge action, uh, which just gives something at disadvantage that's trying to attack you. So if you're worried or if you want to, you know, it's a little hard to do on a griffin, but we can make it work. You could take what's called the dodge action and just make it harder to hit you. In case it does. Yeah. Yeah, in case it tries to close and, and smack you. Um, it doesn't cost me anything to do that? Nope, it's just an action. It's just something you can do in your turn. Let's do it. Okay. Cry, I'll take the dodge action. Connie. Um, I, yeah, I guess Connie's following the others. I mean, in a weird way, like, I'm trying to balance the fact that, like, for, from a character kind of point of view, like, Connie has been kicking ass You're with right. every attack, and there's, like, a weird momentum thing there of, like, part of me's, like, Connie's feeling it, and he's gonna like fucking yeah. try to lead the dragon away from the others or something. But I am tempering that unwise decision with that he is feeling more a member of the team now. So he thought about it. I, maybe we could role play it as like in the moment, like he was like, "Come on, bring it on, dragon!" And he tried kind of taking the Griffin that way, but was the Griffin kind of too scared to like? do that uh you, exactly right so so if you try to move the griffin closer to the dragon it does not it absolutely pulls away yeah connie's eyes were kind of burning and he was he really kind of wanted the fight yeah um but yeah but but he's gets he's, he's frustrated when the griffin's like no i don't think so yeah it absolutely yeah does not um who might know about dragons? If so, give me a nature check. I feel like it's not out of the question for Mekek to have studied something about them. Yeah. <gasps> Nat 20. Oh my gosh. Incredible. Nice. Interesting. Interesting. All right. I'm going to whisper something to you, Galway. Oh. So uh, everyone talk amongst yourselves for a second while I whisper this. Um, yeah, Dom. She means whisper typing. You don't need to take your. Dom, you put him back on. Put him back on. He's going to whisper in roll 20. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> There's a whisper function, so we're, we're all good. Copy that. <laughs> I love that you were just like, okay, take him off. That was awesome, though. It was good. Yeah, I trust you guys. Well, that takes me back to the first time when we were playing and Andy wanted to literally speak, whisper something to a party member and we were like wait i need to take my headphones off but you all hear the stream through me so if i right. like deafen myself you're not going to be able to uh huh 
Huh. Huh. Takes me back to the time that people were trying to whisper to each other and didn't type the command correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do that a lot. Fun times. Fun times. So in the chat, we've got people saying that the Nat 20 revealed that dragons can be milked. Is that accurate? Go. <laughs> Rachel? Yeah, McKeck, uh, can a dragon be milked? I mean... Anything with nipples can be milked. It's a dragon. I don't think dragons have nipples, you guys. They're not mammals. Why are we talking like dragons have mi- nipples? Yeah. Elif, you need to get closer to this dragon. <laughs> not doing that. That sounds ah, like suicide. They seem to be much more in the reptile world, right? So, uh, um, reptile nipples. I hadn't looked at uh, Rachel. I hadn't looked at chat. I just genuinely assumed that you had called out <laughs> Nat Twenty dragons can be milked. I was incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. All right. Uh, so, McKeck, you can do whatever you'd like with that information. Um, dragons can be milked. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so as you're, as you're looking at this, this thing, and it does look like it's starting to get closer to you, uh, Connie, you are the first to see what looks to be behind it, maybe five different smaller shadows, uh, following this thing. And then you hear what sounds to be kind of like a, a, a war cry. A, ah! um, and then a voice that's, run, we have it, friends. This is Grom. <gasps> Grom! Who's Grom? <laughs> oh, the Grom seems to have gotten some of his friends uh, and arrived just in time to start um, attacking the dragon. Hell yeah! If you want, you can disobey that and turn and face the dragon with him. How the fuck would we want to do that? Or all of you can decide to book it to the caves. But it seems like he's doing this to try to give you some time. McKeck is going to, at this, I would say we have the ability to sort of do something a little out of turn order in response? Yeah, yep. Um, I'm going to shout, I don't know that it's actually a dragon. It's behaving very strangely. Right on. So maybe it can be milked. <laughs> God damn it, I love it. Add it to the quote list. Oh, Jesus. All right, uh, so do you, do uh, what's sort of your decision here? Do you turn on the dragon thing or or head to the caves what do you think you guys you think we can take him so it's four of us and how many in the new party two uh five it looks like are they riding wyverns yeah (laughs) you see you see uh them riding sort of uh leathery looking almost tiny dragons um, and, and if you're really squinting, you can barely see through the fog. They have like a stinger on their tails. Interesting. Not unlike a scorpion thing. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, Grom is a s- part of the war effort for Wigmos. He's a soldier. He's a spy. I'm sure these yeah. are all people who um, know what they're doing. Uh, you actually see your friend that you'd sent with him uh, riding on the back of the second one. Yeah. Yay! I forget their name or who they even were, but that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of table talky. Like, I, my sense is that, like, this is a, like, everyone's coming together to try to make the plan work. And right. if they got the dragon covered, then, you know, Connie definitely remembers the, like, Siege Santa and knows the description that Don, that uh, Cryon gave. And so we know that there are other enemies to fight also, so... Um, as much as Connie was like, oh, I gotta take on this dragon, seeing Grom and his old friend and the, the, them them all show up, um, Connie feels better about kind of landing in the cave entrance. All right. Is that cool with everyone else? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that McKeck might call out. Yeah. If you can, cut the ropes leading to the elk. 
Aye, aye. Uh, and then the, you just hear the sounds of battle, um, of screeching, of roaring. Um, and very quickly in the fog, you lose um, this. Something really interesting, though, happens as well. Uh, the As you get closer to the mountain, or because they're, they're fighting, you have no idea why. The clouds around you, uh, the sort of incredibly dense fog, begins to disperse. And you can actually see much better now. It's just a, a bit of haze um, covering the distance between you and now the, the entrance to the cave. It wouldn't take much at all to just fly straight in, if that's what you want. I mean, I got punched by air, so I'm kind of good with not flying right now. Let's do it. Greenhorn's got the black dragon. Let's head him up, move him out. Giddy up. You just became a new type of southern. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Uh, so, um, if you want, uh, again, Cryon, like last time, there's like a little bit more space on the right side of this cave where this river and then waterfall is spewing out of. Yeah. If you want, you can, yeah, kind of go and land the griffins on this side. Seems like a, a, as good a place as any. Seems safe. All right. So the, the rain outside now um, is, is no longer beating down on you. You take a moment, take a breath. You hear distant roars um, outside this cave, um, just barely over the, the noise of the waterfall. Um and you believe again, Cryon, that this goes further back in uh, into the cave itself. Um, but also, uh, you feel that this is a fairly safe period of the cave if you needed to take a, a rest or something. Now might not be terrible. Okay. Um, and just a reminder, the special ocarina that Cryon has has some uh, very cool things that you can do on short rests if you wanted. Well, let's remind ourselves of those things. I restore one hit die at the beginning of rest. Nice. Right, so if anyone is missing some hit die, you can restore one of those. Restore one use of barbarian rage. Restore one spell slot in a druid or mage. Restore 10 HP to an individual. Ooh, but I can only choose one of those, is that, is that right? One of those per short rest, yeah. Okay. We're short resting? If you want to. Might not be the worst idea. Oh, do we We feel like this is like a safe place to short rest? I mean, I mean, yeah, so far, if you're asking me, yeah. Yeah, you guys feel decently safe at the moment, especially compared to what was going on. So, folks, what would you like to do? <sighs> well, I've been in this cave before, right? So, yeah. Yep, last time you were here, you went up uh, and then to the right, um, and you started to see the glinting um, sort of glow of that crystal, even in the cave, bouncing off some of the, the minerals on the walls. And then you turned a corner and you saw a, a very massive uh, cavern in which that crystal was the center of, about a 20-foot drop to the floor, and another 30, 40 feet to the ceiling. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, I could head in a little, little deeper. See if it's see if I can make sense of the fact that it is indeed the same cave. See if those people have gone. It's quiet, right? It doesn't seem to be anyone around. Right. It's it's yeah, a lot more quiet than it was out there. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Should we just head in a little bit? I'd say it might be a good idea to get a little further in and then take a brief break. I got punched by the air really hard. <laughs> he did. Let's do it. Let's sneak on in then. See what we got. All right. Uh, feel free to move as you'd like to. Uh, how long has this sort of flight taken? Uh, uh, probably, probably about half an hour. Okay, so we'd still have about half an hour of uh, pass without trace. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to start moving stealthily, um, you can just give a stealth roll here. Sure. To whoever wants to do it. Add 10 for the moment. 
34, and then a 12 for Galway. For, for McKeck. Cryon with a 35. Ooh. All right. Nice. Yeah, 32. Yeah, every, uh, yeah. So basically, everyone's been really, really sneaky. And then uh, from from McKeck's backpack, you just hear a... <clears throat> which kind of echoes just a little bit down the down the things. Uh, and then it goes away, and everything's fine. It, it's quiet again. You're going to see McKeck, like, scrabble at, in his coin purse and, like, pull out a couple of pieces of copper. Shut up. Shut up, kitty. Not right now. <laughs> Um, and I would probably also beckon to the griffins to move forward a little bit, just so that they're not right in the entrance. Sounds good. Yeah, they'll come. All right, so Connie, you're getting up here. Um, you can see that this this river kind of goes further darkly into the mountain. Um, off to your right, uh, there does seem to be a uh, a cavern that now goes to the right, and that seems to suggest um, that Cryon's scouting was correct. So are we going to do some, like, reconnaissance and then short rest for a little bit? Uh, I was thinking I just mainly wanted to get out of the direct view of someone looking in from the waterfall. Right. So sort of just even around this much of a corner. Okay. I'm also good with going further in if people want to. Just resting would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Position your your tokens where you'd like. Um, And then what do you want to do on the short rest? Do you, do you want to, like, light a fire? Play the ocarina. Play the ocarina for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> A lovely ditty. Uh, little, little Zelda for you. All right. The actual ocarina song. Um. All right, so yeah, uh, so you're playing the ocarina. You're not playing it loudly um, because you definitely don't want uh, the sound bouncing too much. Um, but this ocarina almost even feels like it's only meant for the people very near and close to you. It is it is not something that travels very far. And that might be due specifically to the magic nature of this instrument. And yeah, you get a, you get a key point back. Actually, on a short rest, uh, monks get key points back just no matter what. Oh, so maybe so I shouldn't you, have burned that. Maybe I yeah, should Yeah, so you don't need else. if you want to burn it on something else, that's fine. Can I? Okay, let me let Absolutely. me check. Yeah. So what is this that he can benefit himself or other people? No, I can do other people as well. Restore one use of barbarian rage, restore one spell slot in a druid or mage, or restore ten hit points to one individual. Is anyone like really low on on hit points? But don't we get that back with the rest? You get some of it. Yeah. Um, I have dice I can roll. I have used one of my spell slots. I did you use a rage, Adam? Earlier. I only have one rage right now. And how um, many do you normally have? I can go up to three. Um, I can give you a, a rage. The, the thing is that I don't think I don't anticipate. Well, I don't know what's going to happen combat wise. I really only have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. Yeah. I just, I, yeah. So if we have more than one fight, then I might want to rage more than once, and that would be useful to have. I think that there's just, and here we are very much talking over the table, but um, uh, you being at one rage versus two rages to me is more valuable of a difference between me being down a second level spell slot, but still having two. Right. Or being at three second level spell slots. <laughs> sure. That'll come back to bite us in the ass real hard if I don't have healing or something at some point. <laughs> but yeah. it's just that's sort of how it feels to me of that's your that's one of your primary resources and you're yeah. down one of them. Whereas I still have more options. Okay, yeah. If I'll take a rage. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I'll give you one of those rage things. From... All right, so playing the Ocarina... Um, restores a little bit of that uh, that that ability to enrage yourself and become more powerful. Because, uh, oh, oh, it's so hard. It's damn beautiful. That ocarina makes me sort of mad. <laughs> Love it. I'm going to be rolling hit dice. Okay. How many you got? Well, we discovered that we've been playing that one wrong, remember? 
that it's roll, see the result, and roll, see the result. Oh, that's right. You can decide. Yeah. Yeah. 17. Yeah, we're going uh, gonna to call that good. Yeah. When we leveled up, it wasn't with a long rest. So did our did, was it just our max that increased? Or did we get uh, those hit points also? No, you got that. Yeah, you got the, the okay. ones with you, yeah. And we would have added both one to our max and one to our current hit dice. Yeah, the only resources you guys have used is basically the scorpion guy fight and then Elephant Connie fighting the one dude. Because uh, that was today as well. But Okay. Uh, a few bats fly from somewhere further in the cave past you as well. Um, Cryon, this smells exactly the same as, as last time as well. You're pretty sure this is the same cave. Um, yeah, the water, the waterfall, the bend in the cave. Um, you you didn't look past this first diversion to the right. Um, this cave does seem to go back with the river pretty far. Um, in case that's something you you were interested in. Hmm. But also, you think that crystal thing might be just to the right here. But there's a there's a potential path leading off in the other direction. Yeah. Hmm. Never splits up the party. <laughs> <laughs> Which way had Cryon gone when he was here? He'd gone to the right. Gone, gone to, to the, the right. right. Yeah. It was kind of a ceremony. And do we see an elevation, like a change in elevation between the two? Uh, the, the river is flowing down and out this way, um, so the river does seem to be going uphill very slightly. Down and out, but uphill. It, it's flowing down toward. Oh, you. oh, so, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, so going that way would go up. Yeah. So if we already know what's um, in the chamber with the crystal, maybe we should check out the other way just to see what's what else is happening. Yeah, good show. Okay. Feel free to uh, continue to move. Um, kind of as we're going, if I can be uh, ritually casting speak with animals. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you could have started that on your short rest, too. Okay. So, so if I did that, I would probably be talking, I'd be trying to talk quietly to the bats. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, Hello. Anything interesting in these caves? Oh, there are so many things that are interesting in these caves. Depends on what you mean. My friend over there, he pooped. Guano. Right. Guano. Very expensive currency in certain parts of the world. Is this bat literally smoking? <laughs> Not quite. He just does yeah. that with his wing. Yeah. <laughs> Life is shit. Get to know this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is there anything else that you need? Uh, are there any particular areas where there are lots of people in these caves? Oh, there are many people. If you go this way to the up the stairs and you go out into the the bright, shiny light, there are many people up there. Which way did he point with his wing cigarette? I wasn't yeah, to the to the left. So up and to the left. Uh, and Connie, you can see that there's... there's um, While this cave sort of ends, and, and actually kind of the water seems to just be coming out of the rock itself at this point. There's no cave. There is a little bit of a cavern off to the left. Um, and that's where he was sort of indicating that there are... That's a way to go where there are many people and then sunlight, it seems like. Yeah, so I'll relate relay that to other people. And down this way? Down this way. Not even I go that way anymore. There is a very bright light. The bugs, they don't fly so well over there. I don't go. C'est la vie. C'est la mort. Um, do you mean that there's the light seems to be harming them? They just don't fly so well. Big, big people. They might squish you. We don't go over there. Are you going to go over there? 
is a full Zeran. <laughs> I'd like to say that, like, McKeck has spent enough time, like, looking for, like, fungus and, you know, other herbal ingredients in caves. Yeah. But, like, he's like, yep, bats. <laughs> Always have a cigarette. What the fucking man. No goddamn idea where they came from. Um, he's like smoking a beetle. Caught a beetle. He's smoking. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna. So there do in fact seem to be giants and some kind of crystal that causes the bugs to not fly as well to the right. Or did he say a crystal or just the bright light? I forget. He said the bright light. Bright light, yeah. A bright light that causes the bugs to not fly as well. And then to the left, there is um, stairs up into the bright light, which I would assume is the surface of the mountain, and lots and lots of people. Also, I call this fools at least a couple times. <laughs> kind of. It was hard to tell. Maybe it was just everyone. He seems generally dismissive. Well, we don't want to go outside right now, do we? I don't think we want to be around lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people either. Like, that's just really interesting and scary. Why are we here? We're here to kill Seep Santa? Did he say we're Seep Santa? Do you, um, have any notion of large metal spikes that might come through the ground anywhere around here? Uh, no. This is such things are outside the mountain not for me to to worry about uh, me and my brothers we stay in the cave fair enough good good beater what if one of us went on a little reconnaissance i'm the smallest i'm the most spry i could go down that little left channel see what i could see come back report i'm gonna be way less conspicuous than connie <laughs> Indeed. Based on the information that we're getting from the bat that, that Mikek is passing to us, um, do we... So, up here kind of leads up and outside, yeah? Andy? Uh, a, a little bit, or is yeah. It uh, through yeah. here? No, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, straight and to the left, then. Yeah. Uh, is what leads up and outside. To the right leads to that light, according to the bat and Mikek. Uh, I... I uh, yeah, I mean, it might be helpful to do some quick recon that way, cry out. But I also, I don't know, we're we trying to destroy, maybe destroy this crystal. Do we think that the crystal somehow powers this mountain somehow or something? I don't know. All I know is that the last time I was in this cave, there was some sort of ceremony that seemed to be paying respect to the crystal to be honest those creatures although they hadn't seen me those creatures didn't necessarily seem aggressive or evil or bad they were just having a ceremony that i, I don't know if the crystal is benevolent or bad hmm. well yeah maybe some quick recon and by the way bugbears happen to be quite stealthy it's a misconception no, no, of course. Of course. <laughs> Just saying. No, no, of course. So, yeah. That might be fun for me to just go on a little mission. So, do I... Do I... I, I can't see where I'm headed, right? Am I... Am I... Right. I was going to say, that's the other thing is, going that way, there is no light at all. Uh, Halflings can't mm. see in the dark. You would not be able to see without torchlight. Um, and mm. torchlight can kind of give away your position. If you're sneaky. Ooh, yeah. Tani might suggest, based off of his reminder that, well, I'm stealthy too. Maybe both of us can go and I can use my dark vision to kind of lead us to where we need to go. Oh. But also, I'm open to hearing what Mikek and Elif think we should do. Mikek? Elif? I was waiting for Galva because he usually has ideas about plans. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know, part of, like, I, I think it's kind of like we need to kind of like understand like what the lay of the land is and like 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 like, like where possible enemies are and stuff, right? So I think it's okay to do some recon, but we just gotta like we gotta be careful, like super 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 super, super careful because we're we're here for a goal, right? And that goal is to bring down the mountain. Your friend sounds like a bet. 
On, on occasion, yes. She is batty. Ah. So like I do have like 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 I have message. So if you guys like can stay like um like within uh, sixty feet of me, let me check the range of that. Then we can like can be like uh, safe. Hundred twenty feet. I'm gonna sort of pull uh, Kitty out of my pack. Okay. Huh. I'm pretty sure you can see quite well in the dark huh? and sense quite well. Huh. If this mountain isn't stopped, they are going to blow up all the treasure in Burden. And then we can never have people pay us that treasure. If you help us here, I will give you half of whatever monetary treasure I get out of this. Is there any way you can communicate with me what you see? And it kind of hops over to the, like the wall, and it starts to kind of, with one of its clawed wings, sort of draw a little bit on the wall. Ah! I'm gonna go look. Uh, it looks like a stick figure, crudely drawn. This is a person. Ah. Is this one of us? Uh, give me an animal handling check real quick. 16? Uh, you, you think it was mostly demonstrating its ability to communicate to you. Through Rather draw. than trying to, yeah. All right. Well, everyone, it seems like Kitty is interested in helping us out in exchange for treasure. Because Kitty keeps an eye on the bottom line. Um... We could maybe send Kitty one direction. Connie goes the other. We stay in the middle. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Look, fundamentally, we have two bombs. <laughs> we should place them places where we can do a lot of damage with them and then get the hell out of here. Well, we already have some sense of what lies down yonder. So that might help mitigate any confusion in the communication between Kitty and us. So why don't we send Kitty that way? And they can let us know if they see a crystal and a circle of giants or whatever. And Cryon and I can go up this way and report back real careful about what we see up there. The more information we have, the better. How's that sound? I like that. I like that. Sounds good. Cool. Um... I'm going to try to just stay 120 feet behind them, unless it seems like they're going way far away, so that they can message me, so that I can just have message up. I'm going to leave myself he probably here as a hub point. And if I hear screaming or anything, I will come running. Um, but I'm also going to tell Kitty, be very careful, and if you think you're in danger of being seen, come back to me, Okay. And I'm going to, like, jingle a coin purse. Like. Nice. Cry on, make sure you hold on. <laughs> tug on to my pant leg or my a trench coat. Or you can ride on my back or something. Yeah, where are you? I can't see you anymore. Where are you? <laughs> yeah. So there is a rushing river going through here, too, by the way. Um, and uh, across that river, then, is that cavern that supposedly leads up. Um. So, uh, Kron, this is about as far as you can see at all. Um, you can hold on to Connie's coattails. I'd love to. And try to swim across. I've been doing that all game. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can either hold on to the coattails or, like, climb up and just, like, ride on my shoulders or something as I kind of cross the river. That's true, too. Yeah, let's, let's do whichever is the cutest. <laughs> <laughs> What's the cutest? <laughs> Also, McKeck is going to sort of put the prop the torch up so it looks like someone might have like left it and would come back to it. Okay. Find the nearest sort of pile of large rocks and just go and be entirely in his shell as just another boulder. Okay, nice. Yeah. And now we wait. Right on. Yeah, give me a stealth check for that. I like it, yeah. 
Uh, Connie, give me an athletics check to swim across the river with Cryon on your back. 15. 18 athletics for me. All right. I like. Okay. Uh, 18 athletics. Yeah, you uh, you both. Um, there's a few times uh, where the water that's uh, pretty powerful and it's actually somewhat deep here um, kind of splashes up and onto you, Cryon, and you really have to hold on. Um, but the two of you uh, make it over to the other side, and you're still on his shoulders as he crawls up out of the of, of the water. This cavern you cannot see at all, Cryon. But you did hear a click. Connie, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Um. So I have danger sense. Okay. Um, which gives me advantage on deck saving throws against effects I can see, such as traps and spells. Okay, this is something that you're barely able to see. Uh, it is a it is a large boulder um, on some sort of swinging contraption, and it's coming straight at the two of you. Sugar plums. All right, so I'm going to roll with advantage. Okay. A little, tiny bit harder with Cryon on your back. Nice. 21. 21. Yeah. Oh, so you are just able to pull Cryon back as well um, and dodge, uh, putting your body all the way against the wall. Uh, this thing swings out and over immediately the water. If it hit you, you might have just had a very hard time now not being... Uh, shoved in the river and over the edge of this giant floating mountain. And that felt like a trap that we triggered? That felt like a trap. You you hit a pressure plate, probably. Or something. Oh, man, oh, man, I was telling, I was telling Elif back in that basement in Burton that I had this, this danger sense. At the time, I think I let it get a bit out of hand. But this time, it was useful. It's a Connie tingle. It's a Connie tingle. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Connie. That's uh, something that Vern used to do to me, too, but uh, that's something else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cryon, you, you just hold on to me. We'll keep going, and eventually there should be some light. Yeah, so Cryon, you're just kind of riding on his back for now. Um, if you want to give me a perception check to listen, you can really try your best to try to hear what's going on. Um, and Connie, if you wanted to look ahead, that's fine, but your vision then would require you to have disadvantage on it. And needless to say, um, we are trying to be stealthy. Uh, then Connie, give me a stealth check. Pass Without Trace is still on, right? Yeah, it is, for now. Yep. Nice. 33. You guys are moving so silently, and Cryon, you're having such a an easy time now distinguishing what's not our noises and what is something else. You can hear a few bats flitting through the air back and forth even though you can't see them hmm. lighting beetles as they go and Connie you're not able to see much you're barely able to make out the train in this darkness yeah this was always a side effect of a Connie tingle just kind of a little haze alright so the two of you are doing that um, uh, and McKeck and Elif you have just uh, let um, Kitty uh, go off into the caves with explicit instructions to flee as quickly as if and be like cautious and flee. Okay. Um, probably about three or four minutes pass. Five minutes pass. Maybe ten minutes pass, and you haven't heard from Connie, Cryon, or Kitty. And then you hear some flapping and kitty comes flying out of the cave lands right in front of you uh looks a little wide-eyed and it kind of hops over to the wall and starts sort of scrawling uh, on the wall kind of and um fuck it if you can see this i'll uh, i'll just draw it on our map here what what the what it's doing uh so it's doing this that's what it scrolled. I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> can you? Exp oh no, you can't explain it to us. We're nowhere near. Darn it! Yeah. But they can describe it to us as players. Come on. 
Oh, is that like something like kneeling, like a humanoid kneeling and then reaching up? With is that what this is? McKeck is actually going to like pop out and do that position essentially. So like my back legs are kind of folded under me. My front legs are oh, okay. like this. Uh, at this, uh, Kitty starts dancing, kind of dancing around and twirling around, very happy that you somehow got that from this. <laughs> I'm gonna to toss Kitty a gold piece. Right on. Pictionary with a with a I forgot what this is called. Pseudo, <laughs> the dragon. pseudo dragon. Yeah. Alright. Uh so yeah, that's what's communicated there. So probably the giants are still there. Oh, also Kitty, uh pointing at the the picture of the, the bowing figure. Big, really big. <laughs> Okay, the giants are still there. Yep. Hmm. All right. Um, up ahead of Connie and and Cryon. Cryon, you're starting to freak out. This is a, a, just a sensory deprivation <laughs> chamber, essentially, for you. It is so silent, and it is, and you are floating through the air on the back of Connie. The only real sense you have right now is the smell of several day bugbear who hasn't showered. Um, hey, I just swam through the river. What do you want from me? That wasn't li- enough of a bath. A wet fur uh, sort of Connie. Um, but up ahead, then, both of you do, uh, after you started climbing stairs at this point, um, you do see a bit of light then up ahead. Um, it looks like this kind of goes out into sunlight a little bit. And as you get a little bit closer, then you start to see f- shadows and figures passing in front of the light. Walking in front of the light? Yeah, right. Like they're walking, like this is like a cave entrance and they're walking just in front of it. Back and forth. What do you think, Crown? I think we should try to get closer and try to look out. Okay. You, who? Both of us? You or me? Uh. Who has, who has the best stealth? I mean... If I had to put a numerical value on my sense of skill, <laughs> yeah. I'd say maybe around a six. Yeah, my, I, I would I would have guessed just off the top of my head, mine's a seven. You're some more, wait, did you say you have, you're just a seven? Yeah, that's a guess. Oh, man. I, you know, Vern and I would measure our stealth together. And he was, you know, Vern was like eight or nine. That's more like a campfire conversation. You know what I mean? <laughs> Vern's eight or nine. Let's talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about Vern's eight or nine later. <laughs> I, I'm I, just off the top of my head. I would guess that maybe my stealth ability, if you were to numerically rate it, is one higher than yours. That's all I would say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, which is awesome. That's so cool, Cryon. Good for you. High five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably what's more important is. Do we trust Adam or, or Dom to roll a die right now? <laughs> <laughs> break, so it's sort of getting into a push. <laughs> All right, Adam, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a stealth thing. Gonna... Yeah, go on ahead. You've been doing all that s- strong swimming and navigating. Exactly. Although, to be fair, no, I, I probably would trust Dom more because luck. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. 13. I'm not sure how good that is. Uh, okay, 13. A 13 crown. All right. But it's the 23, right? With Pass Without Trace? Uh, it's been 10 more minutes. I, th- I think you have about 5 to 10 minutes left of that. Yeah. So so you're getting toward the end of it. But yeah, so a 23 total. Um, All right, crown. Yeah, you're you're moving up on ahead uh, very carefully. Um, you just see these kind of figures walking back and forth. Now you're starting to be able to hear a little bit of their conversation as they pass in front of the cavern. It's all about, uh, we're almost there. We're almost in range. Um, it, it's not long now. Uh, that sort of thing is what you hear back and forth. Um, it seems like they're manning some equipment. Um, but again, yeah, that's about all you can you can hear at the moment. Okay, so I'll I'll scuttle back to uh, to Connie. All right, as as you scuttle back, please give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh no! 
Oh, because there's the chance that I might have tripped something. Or, oh. You hear another click. I was honestly going to say earlier, I was like going to say, like, all right, I'll stay here. Keep an eye out for any traps or anything. Oh, but thank God I don't need to. A 24. Oh. Um, you see, you, you click something and you see the wall next to you light up in some sort of circular a runic fashion and you're barely able to just duck and scurry out of the way before you just see a, a fire blast straight from that rune straight across um even even hitting someone smaller like you uh it would have fried your head if that hit you and it makes a lot of noise you just hear a of flame here. It lights up the entire cave. You can now see Connie down the cave <laughs> for the first time in this firelight. Just f eyes wide. And you hear a lot of voices then behind you turn and now shouting at the mouth of the cave as soldiers are now running down the cave toward you. Oh. Fiddly. Could we hear that from where we were? You heard a <sighs> And you even see the light shine at the, the end of the cave here. It was intense and bright. The stone next to Aleph is going to go, that's probably not promising. <laughs> I mean, like, explosions are, like, always promising, right? Like, they only lead to good things, so that's probably a good thing, but we should go, we should go make sure that they're okay. But also, like, explosions are good. So you start running, Cryon, about 10, 15 feet before the, the light behind you turns off. And now it's just darkness ahead of you. You know Connie is 15, 20 feet ahead of you at this point. And there are advancing soldiers maybe 50 feet behind you now. Oh. And we're going to stop there for tonight. Oh, no! I have an idea! We were getting so much juicy information then. <laughs> Keep the idea for next time, ladies and gentlemen. Write your idea down. Hey everyone, next week is the finale of this arc. Uh, everyone, they're gonna they're gonna wrap some stuff up next week, uh, so you don't want to miss this. This is gonna be really fun. It's gonna be really cool. But but Andy, when you say oh, yeah. the finale of the arc, that's just yeah. basically a, a, a very soft pause on that particular adventure that they're on. The world that Cryon is right. is a place that he can come back to. I just want to make that clear to myself. But anyone else? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, if Cryon doesn't die, which let's let's hope he doesn't, I'm sure he's fine. Um, and McHeck is a really good healer. You're good. Uh, and Dom, you are welcome back at any point you want to come back. Thank we can all we love this game. You're have we're having so much fun with you. Same. So yeah, so Dom has to go do some Hollywood stuff. So we're gonna pause that for a little bit and we'll wrap up this like mountain arc. Um, is basically what that means. And then, uh, yeah, and then once schedules are freed up again, we'll, we can uh, come back to this and uh, cry on in the gang at any point. Um, so that's that's sort of what we're doing. Uh, yeah, um, I think, uh, how do I normally wrap this up? Uh, I guess uh, <laughs> we love all of you so much. Uh, you're so awesome. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with us. And we'll see you guys later uh, from all of us on Goats and Dragons. Have an excellent evening. Good night. Bye, friends. Good night, everybody. Be well. Take care of each other. Love y'all. Good night. Love it. Ooh, Love it. Cool. So this is, this is exciting. Yeah, you guys are getting some good stuff. I got into a a real <clears throat> a real kind of classic Dungeons and Dragons vibe. Yeah. The cave. There was some booby traps. I was like, oh shit, this is some old school Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yeah, had I'm just super I'm super happy you guys went that way too, because I'm like ah oh, I got you know cool traps set up and deadly yeah. traps. I thought the first one would have made you a little wary of the second one. It's all good. Made us turn back. I had that late late uh, late throw lock that I keep getting on the dice. <sighs> I seem to have this late game lock. Yeah, that's awesome. Got to stick with that. Like beginning of the game, right after the break, and then right before the end. Right. Yeah. Gnarly. Super gnarly. That's where Dom shines. All right. Uh, cool. So, uh, yeah. So let's do our, our little ritual here. Um, uh, what is it that you thought uh, that you did really well tonight, that you were really proud of, that you really enjoyed doing? We had an extra long session tonight. So, um, so there's, yeah, a lot of content. Um, 
anything anything stick out to you? Well, the thing that made me laugh the most tonight was right at the very end there where there was the big fiery burst of explosion and Aleph was like, oh, explosion, but, you know, those things are kind of cool. <laughs> Even though it could have taken your head off, that's kind of fun. Kind of like fun. <laughs> it's just so in character and at that point in the relationship between Cryon and Aleph, even though he probably would have rolled his eyes, he would have found that funny as well because he was nice. obsessed with <laughs> explosion. So that really made me laugh. I love that bit. Nice. I this isn't like directly related to my role playing, but I really like how engaged Twitch chat was tonight and oh, tying oh, cool. in the dragon's milk thing. And I don't know, it was it, it's always really nice when we have um when we have like an audience that's like actually like engaging and watching our show and yeah. chatting about it. It's it was it was a lot of fun. So that was nice. Nice. Yeah. It sounds like a silly thing, but I, I'm enjoying the con- the continuing embrasure of McKeck in this very sort of humdrum life. Like, he's a merchant. Yeah, He cares about his shop. He cares about the town for kind of less altruistic reasons in a lot of ways. Like, very genuine and he doesn't want to see people hurt. But it's kind of interesting playing this character who's on the other side of this very typical, like, D&D like angst adventurer like i must go on this deep quest he's like yeah no i own this place i i'm good <laughs> but yeah I have to protect it now <laughs> yeah your little comments about like how much money did i make <laughs> or like you know from selling marshmallows or i just i'm like oh my gosh it's just so funny i am also just picturing kitty with like an old style like accountant's cap and like the like arm bands <laughs> <laughs> right on right on Adam, what'd you like? what did you like about yourself? What'd you do good tonight? Um, I was glad that we got to do the the reconciliation stuff. That was cool. And that um the letter from from Vern was was nice. And then that set up a good I think a good moment uh dynamic for um I, I loved fighting on mounted on a griffin and just fucking nailing every shot and yeah. getting to kind of just have uh, Connie feeling really motivated and empowered and just like, yeah, like that was, that was fun. Yeah. 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 It was funny. Cause uh, it sucks that the, the stun didn't work cryon. Yeah. Cause that was something I was commenting during the break that I was looking through the, the air elemental creature that you guys were fighting. And I was like, Ooh, I don't even know if this thing can be stunned because it is immune to exhaustion grappled paralyzed petrified poisoned prone restrained or unconscious and that's it it technically could have been stunned <laughs> i just had a pull it, it is immune to one. everything but stun basically and if you would have yeah if you would have stunned it it would have fallen just fallen to the earth basically yeah stun is one of the craziest powers too in this game you can absolutely shut down something um, yeah, yeah, you if, can. If it, if it rolled poorly, it just kind of yeah. It was a shame the first time you used it. It, it. it was a shame the first time, but we'll it'll it'll come in handy at some point. I, I've not played yeah, that that game, Destiny yeah. Original Sin, that much since I started it. But one of the strongest powers in that is yeah. you have the ability to stun the character, which means everyone around it can take their go, and that thing just has to stand there and take it, which can be a game changer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially against one, like one single creature. Right. Right. I, uh, ironically, Andy, in a previous campaign, a character of mine was stun locked essentially against a monk from your monastery or the Ooh. precursor thereof. Right. That's right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, your monastery has been in my world for a long time. Damn. What was your moment tonight, Andy? Yeah, what about you, Andy? Oh yeah, uh, something I was proud of. I was proud of the bat voice. Oh, that <laughs> was great. I don't that know was why. Really good. I don't know why I'm just making these animals have the weirdest voices and attitudes oh, toward toward you. I also love the fact that there seems to be a trend line with you, since the drow tend to be French. Do you believe that the French live underground, Andy? <laughs> don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't live in Europe. I don't know. Wine cellars. Yeah. yeah. 
Isn't that where you make cheese? And the French know. are subterranean, is what we've discovered. I don't think they live in wine cellars, you guys. Like, yeah, well, in our minds, you do. Hey, Levy. Dom, when is your trip? It's after next week, or yeah, I think we're still trying to work it out because, like I said, they have to make sure that I've been in, a, in an isolation place for two weeks before I go. Sure. Which I have. I've been in isolation apart from going to the grocery store for like over a hundred days now. Yeah. They have to kind of try and get it confirmed. Right on. Yeah, Toronto. I'll be in Toronto, which is um, <clears throat> that place is shut down as well. I go yeah. to Toronto quite a bit, and I have restaurants that I like, and I have friends. See, can't do any of that stuff. I'll just be locked up in a hotel doing this uh, VR show for a few days. But it's nice to get back to work. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for playing tonight, everybody. It was fun. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week. All next right. Week. Later. Bye, Bye friends. Bye. Bye. Awesome. All right. Yeah, I'm going to hop off and eat something back to me. All right. Bye. Sounds good. Sounds Bye. Good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> This has been Dom and Dragons, presented by Helpful Goat Gaming. If you enjoyed what you heard and want to hear more, check out our main Dungeons & Dragons campaign, The Fates of Rin, right here in the Goats & Dragons podcast feed. You can also check out our other podcast, Helpful Goat Presents, where we play one-shots, shorter campaigns, as well as have conversations about D&D and role-playing in general. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Helpful Goat, And if you want to hear us play live, you can follow and subscribe to us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash helpfulgoat. You can also chat with us and other Helpful Goat fans in our brand new Discord or donate to our coffee page to help us keep creating content by clicking the links in this episode description. And last but not least, please consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict, or Stitcher. We are a small independent game design firm and would really appreciate the support. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Mm